This is a smaller, tight-knit group of individuals that really represent the country. It doesn't matter what age you are, if you're willing to win, you're willing to put your best effort. It's not how hard you get hit. I ended up fracturing my thumb. They suspected that he had Crohn's. It's how hard you get hit and get knocked down and get up again. We don't take days off. That's right, strength, no weakness. This guy's kind of the limit. Get ready, because today we're taking a look at some of our future prodigies and pros. From finding gaps to hitting bombs, gear up, because this is no days off. Height doesn't measure heart. He's driven. He wants to prove everybody wrong. One of the smallest guys on the team, and there's that heart you're talking about. After the Time Magazine interview, a lot of people come up to him, ask him questions, and he's a very humble kid. He doesn't let anything get to his head. He doesn't like losing. He's relentless. Sliding in safely as Joey Baseball. My name is Joey, I am 11, and I play baseball. Over here is this when we hit. These are all the bats that I use. Down the middle, I'm just basically trying to hit it straight in the middle of the net, so it's a line drive up the middle. So I'll just, then I'll move it inside. I'll stand in the same spot, and I'll try to hit it on this side. I work seven days a week, and I train my hardest for that time. We're going to All-Pro right now. Sometimes we go to Philly, it's 30 minutes away, uh, depending on which day it is and who he's going to see. I wasn't a baseball player, but I tried to help him with the basic stuff. Then when it was out of my league, that's when I got him the trainers. You ready? Go. Thumbs in. Thumbs up. Right back where the ball came from. Two more, Joey. Good day. Good day. That up. Better. It's competitiveness. Joey hates losing. I think it's there's an importance to that. Yeah, I get um, motivated by losing and just gotta work work off of your mistakes. All the way through, flat to it. Good. I run a program called Brain and Barrel Hitting, and I've been working with Joey for that was nice for two two years. I got a lot of pro guys, a lot of D1 guys, and then I got this kid, he's 70 pounds, who I really don't have to slow down with at all. Mentally, he's there. He knows what he needs to work on. Yeah, two. So that was exactly right. He can basically do everything. There's really not much he can't do. I'd say hard work, definitely talent. I'd say a little bit of everything, though. He does have a good work ethic. Being able to do this you know, all the time before he throws is going to help him stay on the field, keep him healthy. Not a lot of kids at his age are doing arm care. So he's, he's definitely ahead of the game. Try to keep those legs still as much as you can. We go an hour, hour and a half. But then he actually extends his workouts almost every other time. My running coach, Brandon Bing, he played for the Giants, won Super Bowl with them. I'm gonna change it to a, uh, a mini hurdle drill, which is more so for his turnover. So he has to have balance. He's trying to get a rhythm down, because that's all running is. Even though he won't be running like this in the game, it'll help him get faster and stronger. He can be as fast as possible. If he doesn't have snap in his arms and getting that knee back down, I call it lazy. It's important for his hip flexion to be able to push off laterally in his 60s. So I'm watching his arm swing. I'm watching where his first step is. Better. He's got good command. He's a really good competitor. Throws a lot of strikes. Why we're throwing a football is be able to work on this, his front arm when he's throwing. So it's very similar to throwing a baseball. Being able to keep that front arm up. He just uses his body very well. We're working on his hands. It's called uh, short hops. Yeah, he's got real good fast feet. So his foot works real fast, his gloves pretty fast and smooth. And a boy. For his age, he's absolutely more mature than, than most of the other guys. Once that maturation process starts physically and he puts some weight on, that's where he's really gonna start to separate himself if he hasn't already. A big thing for Joey, partly because of his size, he's playing against really skilled guys and really polished guys who also happen to be double his size and weight. Do it. We saw how Joey trains. After the break, we head over to see how he handles the stakes of a qualifying game. Before the break, we saw Joey's rigorous training session. Now his team plays in a qualifying game. Fake to me. Fake to me. Yeah. 
The good thing is everybody pitches their best pitchers at us. Even though, you know, we may struggle against some of the best pitching, but it makes you guys better hitters. If you're used to seeing all the best pitchers, then you're never going to be surprised. But at some point, you guys are going to be able to hit anything, just like the drillers in Texas. They've been seeing it for years. They see everybody's best pitcher, and now they're great hitters. Let's go, big game right here. Everyone better step it up. Let's go. Let's go. Select on three. One, two, three, select. Joey, four over. Jake, three over. Ty, stay even until Joey tells you to move back. My name is Dave Lipoff, one of the coaches for New Jersey Select. We need to keep pouring it on here, okay? We need to get this done early and have a chance here. You understand? Let's go. Joey's a gamer. Um, Joey loves to play, he likes, he likes being out there. And, you know, from a coaching perspective, Joey's one of the leaders, one of the catalysts on our team. You know, I look to Joey to, you know, provide a spark for the rest of the team. All right, go Logan! Go Logan! Let's go, kids. Anywhere we go, a lot of people know who Joey is. So a lot of people will come out. A lot of people will watch Joey play. Let's go, Joey! Let's go, Joe! Come on, Joe! Run it, run it! When there's like a bunch of people watching me, I do pretty good. I just thrive off that. The short-term goal is to get a nice high school education, and then eventually college. You know, I'd love him to get into a D1 school and play some nice baseball if that's what he chooses to do. If I had a crystal ball and it said that Joey would not be a Division I baseball player or he would not make the MLB and that was a guarantee, I wouldn't stop what I'm doing. He's gonna hit a home run. Yeah? Matt's gonna hit a home back run. Back to yeah. back, back to back. Yeah. Come on! Five, zero. Go, 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 go! You know, in regards to the team, he's a teammate. And you know, he doesn't try to make himself above the team, which I enjoy. Let's go, boys! My favorite player, player is Jose Altuve, and I actually have like a stat, this little statue of him right here. I never opened it. It's just my favorite player because he's small, and he had he actually got cut from Major League, and then he had to try out again to make it. A couple weekends ago, I won Player of the Game for NJ Select. I went to spring training and met Miguel Cabrera. Hey, Joey Baseball. What, what you <laughs> <laughs> he started following me on Instagram. I got to like sit on the field for a little bit. I went to, I got to go in the dugout. He likes my work ethic. I just love the game itself. I love, loved everything about it. I would go to the local fields and I would just hit with my dad like little wiffle balls. My goal is to go to a D1 college. I wish that all my work pays off. I will go to MLB, I'll get D1 scholarship. There's a ton of pressure, but it doesn't phase him. Like he just goes up and has fun. I've never heard Joey say, I'm afraid, I'm scared, I can't do this. It's always, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> After a day with 11-year-old Joey, we head over to see 13-year-old prodigy TJ Ford. Before the break, we checked in with Joey Baseball. Now let's see TJ Ford's drive. I want to get drafted out of high school, but if I have to go to college, I will. Who do you want to get drafted out of? Uh, Yankees. He has a lot of the tools that it takes to be a player at the next level. He's going to be the kid that goes out there and he's just hustling. He's driven. He wants to achieve. He wants to push himself. He's got a lot of power. He's got a lot of pop. He's going to be a savage one day. He doesn't need loud music. He doesn't need me yelling at him. He's driven. He wants to achieve. I'm TJ. I'm 13 and I play baseball. Tell me again a bit about that season. Uh, that was the most fun season I've ever had. That's much better. One more. I hit a home run that season, the first one that I had over the fence. I had a couple triples, a couple doubles. And what was your average that season? 871. When I turned eight is when I was starting to hit a lot. You want to start lefty or righty? I met TJ through Instagram, believe it or not. Ever since then, we've kind of just clicked. I started switch hitting when I was seven. We were just like experimenting on which side I was better on. I realized I was good on both sides, so then we just started switch hitting. TJ's raw. He has an ability to go on the field and just to make his presence known. It's a more technical sport. I feel like you can play baseball, you can play any sport. 
try to crunch it, feel it, and then from there, pull it shoulder to shoulder. We got a long way to go, but I'm happy with the person that he's becoming on and off the field. Five yards, fast you can go. Go, push, push, push. Nice. I think it's his passion. Like, I think he really enjoys the game, enjoys being competitive, um, enjoys winning. I definitely see that in the way he approaches things. Anytime I put a challenge with him or, hey, we're gonna do a sprint, we're racing this next guy, he's gonna compete. I train seven days a week. I'm on the smaller side. I don't think it's gonna matter for me. I like to work hard and I think I'll be better than most people my size. Set, good, take off. You take care of your business, nobody else takes care of it for you, right? When I was eight, I didn't play much. But then when I did get to play, I did what I had to do to like stay in the game. Ultimately competing against himself. So how can you push nice. yourself to be the best version of the best athlete you can be? Everybody has different skills. So I think he's honed in on developing what he's good at. Punch. Nice. Let's go, TJ. Just hitting PRs today, baby. PRs today. All day. This is me when I was nine. This is my first powerlifting competition. This is from the 8U division champions. We went 14-0 the whole season, we were undefeated. The same thing for 9U. The same thing over again, undefeated. Some of the balls down here. This one is signed by Craig Biggio. This is my Gold Glove Award, Silver Slugger. Some of my rings, I won this one recently. And then these are my three favorite baseball players up here. They kind of sort of do the same thing I do. Two of them have speed, they have high averages and all that stuff, so. That is from the World Series, and we came third in this tournament, and I went eight for 11. We play a triple A major. We play against good teams. I think it's just a little harder down here than it is on the west and north because we have a lot harder throwers <laughs> down here. So I think Georgia is out there competing against any other state as far as baseball quality goes. It's a game of failure, so how to deal with that is going to help him in life. Way to keep it in front, TJ. And like you said, everybody would love to play pro ball. Not everybody gets to play that. And even if you make it to pro ball, doesn't mean that you're going to make it to the big leagues. We have a lot of good players, and we all play together as a group. We all go out on the field and help each other out and all that stuff. TJ is always working. TJ is a breath of fresh air. He's always out there, always wanting to learn, asking questions. If he does something wrong, he want to know what he did wrong and how to fix it. Whether he's hitting, fielding, throwing, he's always want to get better. So it's always good to see a kid that has that willingness to improve. A lot of the big tournaments are here, so it has helped to open a lot of uh, baseball. And not only open baseball, but just to play at a high level. The long term is normally the hardest for someone who's trying to be successful today. And that one feature with him showing patience, I don't know too many kids that can hold emotions in when they're not feeling something happen. And he does a really good job of that. In a game where you need the patience, in two years, three years, that kid is gonna have something special. I'm really excited to see what's gonna be his future in baseball, but definitely we hope for him to achieve as much as he can because he has the talent to do so. He has kind of set the boundaries for the simple idea of you don't have to be 6'4", you don't have to be 220, you don't have to be a certain color in order to live in the culture of baseball. I think that with TJ holding that much influence into him, it's only going to guide the next kid to be inspired by it. A good person, a good man in life, in the future, that's what we hope for. At least I do as a coach, that's what we try to emphasize on. I just think baseball is more of a life sport. There's not a lot of people that can handle this much failure and still smile throughout a game. It's the same thing on and off the field. Bad days, good days, we just hit a play. After an incredible day with batting average legend TJ Ford, it's time to head down to Texas and meet Tanner Carson. We've seen how Joey and TJ grind. Now it's time to see what 13-year-old Tanner Carson has got. I'd really hope to get drafted, make it to the MLB, and then hopefully future Hall of Famer. He's got all the talent, and I know he's got all the work. He wants to take this all the way to the big leagues. Tanner's work ethic is second to none. He's great at fielding, hitting, pitching. Boy, Tanner. To have the determination, the will to get better at something he wants to do for the rest of his life. The kid lives and breathes baseball. My name is Tanner. I'm 13 years old, and I play baseball. Better, better. Don't get under that baseball. 
Stay level with it. Stay level with it. Now, how perfect was that? It's a pleasure to work with the kid. He's got a work ethic of gold. Dead red perfect, kiddo. Dead red perfect. My name is Chad Allen. I am a um, hitting coach in uh, AA for the Chicago Cubs. Some of the drills I do are very similar to what I do with the guys in the minor leagues. I mean, we do high T to keep his backside from going forward, to help him understand that if his backside forward, he's going to be susceptible to fastballs up, fastballs in, and breaking balls down. If I'm swinging as I'm landing, what am I doing? Just a little here, a little forward. But if I'm going boom, boom, then I have everything behind it. Right now, we've been working on keeping my hands inside and getting extension through. I have a pretty big problem of leaning back, and that causes a bunch of pop-ups. When you're going to drive down to hit the baseball, if I go here, I'm gonna hit a pop-up. But remember when we talked about our chest getting even with our front side? I'm driving down. That's how I finish balanced. That's a lot better, dude. One of the best qualities I think the kiddo has is just the ability to understand his body. I think it's him taking a swing and not me having to tell him what he did, but going, I felt it. That's a huge quality for a kid at his age to understand is, I felt it, now go make a correction. That's tough Ooh. in the minor leagues, even in the big leagues, but the great ones can do that. Dead, red, perfect. I'd say I realized I was pretty good at it when I had the opportunity to play on an older, I think it was two or three years older team. And that was the day my dad and I made the decision I was either going to stop playing baseball or play on a lower level or I was going to step up and start working hard. Tanner works his ass off. Most kids at that age, I don't think, have figured it out. They're kind of like, oh, baseball's fun or soccer's fun or whatever it is. They're just doing it because it's enjoyable. But Tanner has a goal in mind and he's grinding every day to get to that goal. It feels like you got a little bit of a responsibility to pick yourself up and keep going. A lot of it is trying to build the big muscle groups like your leg and your upper body. We do a bunch of squats and that's really good for baseball players to get that leg drive through. When I first started training, he was like a little boy and now it's night and day different. For example, that little kettlebell he was carrying overhead today, when we first started squatting, that's what he would use. And it was everything he could do to maintain proper form, proper mechanics, and even just the strength in general. So we've transitioned from very, very foundational basics all the way to high-end performance training. He's just so locked in on his goal, and I think he understands because we've had the opportunity to talk to major league ball players, major league coaches, minor league players, minor league coaches, that he understands that it's so hard to get to where you want to go. From eight, it was a transition from the worst kid on the team to nine to, all right, you got something, to 10. I would put my son at 10 years old against any kid in the United States. This was an MVP award that I won in a tournament where I think I hit either six or eight home runs in five games. And that was very, very special to me because they only handed out one and there was maybe 20 teams in this tournament. So it was very special to me. These are some of my rings right down here. And then I have a whole goblet of rings in there. I won this medal when I was in North Carolina playing with top tier and this one also. We didn't win this one, but we got second. So again, two very, very special things. These other two giant trophies. This was in Kansas City and I'm pretty proud of that because that was a very hard tournament and it was a well-organized one. I love this. A couple of my bobbleheads, don't worry. Josh Hamilton is not actually missing two arms and his bat in real life. It's just something I got when I was three and I didn't know what to do with it. I won this one last tournament. It's really heavy though. It's in a Kona glove. They're still the only glove that's still made in the USA. Really good gloves. They last forever. I really like Rawlings, I think they have a really good glove. I think that their gloves break in pretty fast and they last a long time. The way that I normally break in my gloves is I'll hit it with the hammer and you just beat it until it gets pretty loose and then you can form it and then you keep on doing that process over and then you play catch with it. So the lean back happened after contact, right? Mm -hmm. I hope that Tanner goes as far as he wants. He works his face off. The thing about it is, is people talk about like, he does so much baseball, he does so much baseball. Isn't, aren't you worried about it? I'm not because I'm gonna tell you right now that baseball teaches about life. It's not about a sport. You're gonna get knocked down in life. You're gonna get people who tell you you're not good enough. You're gonna fake. That's a terrible ball. And which your arms got. Yeah. 
yeah. goes there. Which causes? Under and up. Okay, and it can lead to some roll -over. So that's the importance of keep maintaining those big angles. When you're going to hit, you can't be strong because I can, I can move your wrist and I can control you by applying pressure with just two fingers and hurting you, all right? So if you want to be in a strong position, you have to maintain that angle that you start. The sport of baseball will teach you how to keep pushing through, keep working hard. There we go. I think no days off means kind of what it sounds like. I'd say you work your butt off, do everything you can, and you don't really get a rest. You keep going, no days off. Where do you see him going? As far as he wants. He's got everything in place. He's got a fire inside of him that you usually don't see until you get to guys like big league age. He's going to have to prove to himself that he's going to have to get better every single day, which he already has that in his mind that he's going to do that. So for me, the biggest challenge for him is going to be understanding, hey, there's probably people out there right now that are better than you. But guess what? That doesn't mean you can't get better than them. I'm really most proud of Tanner that he's a good person. I think at the end of the day, that's all you can really hope for as a dad. Your job is to teach them how to be a good person, how to be a good citizen, how to be a good man. I think all my children have done a great job of that, and I'm most proud that they are good people. Left shoulder square to the pitcher. There you go, good. That's perfect, perfect. From insane batting averages to non-stop work ethic, we saw three incredible athletes today. Give them a follow and help support their journeys. This was just one day down for these future legends. They'll be back on the field and in the gym tomorrow. Because when you want to be the best, there are no days off.